If the and welcome pushed, to Far North no Tactical's Saturday morning wake up call right here on KFAR. It's local talk radio 660 on your AM dial. But we are streaming live around the world at KFAR660.com and on your smartphone with the TuneIn Radio app. It is, by the way, free of charge. Good morning. I'm Steve Floyd, the monkey behind the machine. I'm here to make sure that the message gets out. Joining me in the studio with the message this morning from Foreign North Tactical, it's Aaron Bennett. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Steve. And from Big Horn Enterprises, we have Josh Bennett in here as well. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. Gentlemen, the floor is yours. Well, you got something you want to immediately say? or just? No. no I just want to get right into um, making sure everybody's going to vote for um, Obamney. <laughs> I'm actually really excited for the November 6th, because November 7th, I can listen to the radio without hearing these stupid <laughs> commercials all stinking day, no, non See, that, that's that's where you're wrong, because on November 7th, we start running the uh, 2014 Senate campaign ends. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, not the other thing that you have is uh, 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 November 7th, they start playing Christmas music, so... You're stuck with no radio until about uh, January 15th. I've already been listening to Christmas music for two weeks. Oh, getting pre-prepped. That's right. Pre-gaming. <laughs> Pre-game show. I like the, uh, I wonder if anyone, when you listen, I mean, I've had to listen to these commercials. I guess I could turn the radio off, but then I'd miss Steve's show. <laughs> the, uh, these guys, when they say... The last one of the great ones I just heard was uh, they had some guy saying, "Show and show, oil executive made fifty million dollars this week." While you're stuck with blah 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 blah, it's one of those our oil, we're all communist, may pull run around thing. And I wonder if anyone actually knows that that's exactly what the communists did when they take over like Cuba or they. The Soviet Union, it was all about class warfare. And these guys are using the exact same tactics in their commercial, saying, look at that rich guy. We need to get him. We need to get what's ours. And they ought to, when they're disclosure or whatever, and whoever is endorsing that commercial, and I don't remember who it was, but he should definitely not be voted in because he's a communist. He espouses communism. Whether he knows it or not doesn't really matter. Yeah, but I think we've all... Um, we've all like Richard May- Mayberry says, we've all swallowed the pill of socialism, which is, is essentially communism. <laughs> you, uh, it's what? really hard to get anybody to argue against, um, you know, and they're not, they never think about it as an individual. The individual, the oil company's not an individual. It's this corporation with all this money, so... Right, but this commercial specifically talked about the single oil executive made $50 million this week while you're dying in the streets. Well, I don't think most people even understand what capitalism is in anymore. <coughs> I had somebody the other day trying to tell me that Romney was a capitalist. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. R- Mitt Romney? The guy who's running for president? He is not a capitalist. Well, he is because he made money. No, but that's not. The, the, <laughs> but capitalism does not require government largesse for you to make money. Oh, wait a minute. Obama's made a bunch of money too. Oh. He's a capitalist. They're all capitalists for themselves. I think maybe you need to change the word to capital F. No. Well, I, I think that people need to understand that capitalism is a forgotten ideal. The idea that somehow you can make money while at the same time helping other people to make money, so that everybody is happy. At the end of the transaction, it's like an unheard of ideal. Voluntary interaction? Not even um, um, Neo. Even in the singularity, it's still capitalism. If you're going out and um, applying yourself to make capital wealth, you don't have to make other people money and make them happy. All right, those guys are more like neo-fascist capitalists. Who? The Mets. Oh, Right. He's a, that, he, yeah, cap, he's a cap, capitalism at any cost. He has used capitalism to get, uh, per se, to get his wealth, but he's also used crony capitalism. He's used fascism. He's used everything that he can to take advantage of. Which is of. essentially just using the political process. Right. Exactly. And once you bring in the political process, it's no longer capitalism. Exactly. In, in, the, in the true sense of the world, it is not capitalism. If you have to get a political contract to get people to do business with you, it is not capitalism. 
No. Well, don't we use the political process to destroy business? All the time, brother. And to prop business up. Right. So it just kind of goes hand in hand. Hmm. Man, I wish I could remember whose commercial that was. That really bugged me. Isn't that essentially what socialism it's is, a... is when the government uh, controls business? Yeah. Well, it, it's it's who's it's... controlling business because there's socialism where it, there's that joint nebulous, we all own it crap, like what we have with our oil. By the way, in the name of that group, Josh, is It's Our Oil, Duh. Oh, okay. That's the, that is the actual name of the pack. It's Our Oil, Duh. Nice. It's our oil, duh. Do they spawn? Do they support anyone? No, that's the whole point. Is as a political action committee, they must not actually oh. support any specific candidate. So they throw their money around in support of general. Not not giving away two billion dollars and stuff like that. Probably. Far far less than two billion that they're giving away toward <laughs> advancing their own ideas. Huh. That's interesting. It's our oil, duh. I like that. It's, you know, I it's, know it's, it's good oil, capitalism. Though. It's good capitalism for you guys at the station here, because I'm sure a lot of money. I think we should lobby to have uh, 660 play ads for free for anybody that has a, you know, a really good cause. We I, already do. They're called PSAs. I think if I uh, had enough money, I would pay KFAR not to play, not to play. <laughs> Ads from politicians. You know, my boss would be up for that. He, I bet he, he would. Yeah, He's, he is a true capitalist. If you come in with a good, solid proposal, he'll he'll listen to you. I've noticed that about this station. They yeah. definitely take cash money. Yep. Motivated. <laughs> Absolutely. Motivation. Yeah. We're in good hands. <laughs> anyway, I'm just glad. What you'd like to have over. an hour of us? The sound of a shoe pounding in a microphone? <laughs> Absolutely. We can do that for you. I'm just glad it's going to be over with. I'm wondering, you know, it's so neat that we're so easily fooled by these guys that they're lying to us, right? Even in their commercials, they're lying. There's nothing truthful that they're telling us. Well, except when they say they're going to rip someone off, they're definitely... Whenever they go after another class, another sector of society, they definitely you can pretty much figure out that they're telling the truth then. But whenever they're talking about what they're going to quote-unquote give you... Hope and change. Hope and change. It's a lie. First of all, they have to steal it from you before they can give it back. Oh, I love it. I love it. You know, and I can't wait to not vote on Tuesday. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I keep having, having people trying to throw that guilt thing on me again as if somehow I'm letting the country down if I don't go out and participate in the process. And I'm noticing that this time around, it is primarily the anti-Obama people who are trying to get me to throw in with this, uh, well, I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. I, I do not believe that Romney is a capitalist. I do not believe that he is a true uh, liberty-minded er, in person. I believe that under Romney, we will have more fascism, that we will have more of a police state, that we will have more government controls in business, that we will have fewer individual freedoms. I believe that Romney is a bad choice. And everybody's like, yes, but Obama's so much worse. And I'm like, you know what? If you tell me that I have to go out and vote one more time, I will. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to vote for Obama. Is that what you want me to do? Or are you, can you just leave me alone to not vote? Uh, remember, remember, this, this 6th of November, your votes fan the embers of fascist offenders. Both lying pretenders are bailout defenders, death by drone senders, and liberty enders. I saw that post. <laughs> Was that about Stalin? No. Oh. He didn't have drones. Oh. That would be... Uh... Well, in a sense he did. They were members of the Communist Party. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just like today, I mean, you, you, we may have actual physical drones that go out, but we also have people that belong to the Re Republican Party, and we have the people that belong to the Democrat Party. What's the difference? Doing the well of my masters. <laughs> Bring the honey home. <laughs> you know, but, uh, it's just so hard to get people to realize both these sides, local too. I mm -hmm. don't care who it is. It doesn't have to be just the national. The local ones are a bunch of crooks too. They do not care about us at all. They care about getting voted into office. And they care about, supposedly it's giving back to the community, even though they get a pretty good stipend for going down there. Never see them 
You know, don't see any of them volunteering not to take any money while they're there, which I think is the tune about... You did. You volunteered. Oh. Well, that's why I didn't get elected. But, you know, I've been to some of these uh, little meetings that these guys have and stuff, and particularly just to show, just to explain what I think they're all a bunch of crooks. I went to a Republican one one time, and the uh, the delegation there was basically telling us that, this was at the beginning of the year, I think, basically telling us that Fairbanks wasn't going to be getting any money from the legislature, according to the heads up down there, because, you know, the higher-ups and the, the chairmans or whatever, because we didn't vote in enough Republicans up here. So they didn't want to have any money pass off to Fairbanks, because then the Democrats that were in office, like... Kawasaki and whoever it was, Joe Thomas, I think, could take credit for it. So they specifically told him, you know, you guys need to get some Republic, more Republicans voted in up there, and then we'll start letting the money go. So we got pretty much a squat from the state legislator this year, and it's specifically because they didn't want the Democrats to get any credit for it. So does that sound like something like they care about us at all? Do they care about us little fair Well, it's bankers? really important, Josh, that you don't ever let Democrats be painted in a good light. That's true. No matter who it screws. It's not screwing anybody if you think about the you moral... You can eat a big glob of that candy bar and <laughs> talk in the microphone. The, mor- <laughs> the moral behind it is, um, you know, we got to keep the Democratic Party down. That's more important than your constituents. Well, and I'm not saying that if it was the reversal, I'm sure the Democrats would actually do the same thing. There's no doubt in my mind. But, you know, the fact is, I sat there and listened to them say it. They're a bunch of jerks. They don't care about us at all. Even though they come on the radio, the same people, and they tell us about how much they care about Fairbanks. No, they don't. They just want to be voted into political power. That's all they care about. I mean, if I was one of those legislatures that was telling this little meeting that, instead of doing that, I would have came back and got on Steve's radio station and said, you know what, the political powers that be in the Republican Party told us they're not going to give us any money because not enough of Republicans were voted in. They don't want anything to go, any credit to go to the Democrats. They don't want anything good to happen. Well, there's, there's Democrats in there because then, you know, we might not get Republicans in next time or whatever. Those people should have came on your show and told everyone what kind of crony crap that was. Because that's exactly what it is. That's a bunch of crap. They're using a little politics on us. You know, and then those same people come on here and then they say that, uh, or their their ads, that, you know, we're going to fight to get uh, affordable injury. We're going to fight to do this. We're going to fight for you. We're going to fight for you. No, you're not. You're liars. It happened this year. You got told you're not going to get any money sent this way. Okay. You know, if you if you think about it, the whole aspect of political power really is about cronyism. Why do people want to go down there to Juno in the first place to defend our liberties? Do they want to go down there? To, yeah, that's to, going on. <laughs> yeah. Do they want to go down there to keep laws from getting passed that would restrict our ability to do business? Do they do they want to go down there to Juno to? keep us from becoming a, more subjected to ridiculous laws, or do they go down there and try to dream up laws? Like, I know we're going to a- enact a ban on texting while driving, which I would tell you that's or just the beginning. Or your pants. No, well, that's not here. The, the saggy pants law, that's in another state. Oh, that'll you know sweep what, still America. Know. What's the difference? He's talking about local legislation. I'm talking, yeah, I mean, and that, that group that you were talking about, it's our oil duh. I mean, that, that whole aspect of trying to get more money away from people who are making money in order to be able to hire more people at, at the government level to get paid for doing nothing. I mean, isn't that what politics is all about? Mm-hmm. Isn't that why we send them there in the first place to make sure that Fairbanks gets their fair, to make sure that we get our fair share? Fair share of what? Fair share of whose money? Yeah. Whose exactly. money are we fighting over? How about this? I make my money... And you keep your mitts out of it. And your Obamas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. Yeah, if people think that I'm accusing the Republican Party of being crooked or something, I definitely am. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, Josh. Don't hold back. They are. They're crooks. 
And here we go again. It just It's so depressing knowing that just 12, 10 months away from now, we'll have this all over again. Uh, but here we go again. These guys spent oodles of money, which is just amazing how no one's bothered by how much money is spent in advertising for someone to get elected. That should be a red flag by itself. You spent how, how much money to get elected to do something? Some of these guys, even the local elections, are spending more money than the average guy here in this town makes in a year. Something something weird about that. What's the... I mean, there's... You can't tell me there's not some kind of benefit for them that they're just going down there to give back to the community because that's bull. You don't believe somebody when they say, I just want to serve my community, I just want to go and do some time for service, I want to give back? No, because first of all, they accept all the benefits that come along with it. They accept the payments that they get for it, and they pass laws that take liberties away from the same people that vote them in. All of them do. There's not. A, there's don't. no exception. Because what? Because they don't. Right. It's just the answer. They just Who, don't. Right. Who's that? Who's speaking over there? Identify yourself, voice. <sighs> Israel Bennett. Israel, now what are you saying? They don't what? They don't. They they're not there to help anyone but themselves. Well, they're friends. Themselves. If you, oh. So if you're helping yourself, you're helping your friends. You're really helping yourself. Is that what you're saying? No, they're they're friends in the borough. I don't think they're everybody all. gets into office with that intent. No. But political power quickly sways them to but board over other people. The definitely. borough is the borough. You see what I'm saying? It's not they're you don't look at them always as individuals. You think of them as the borough. Or cattle. This, are we gonna get into one of those discussions about what is government again or who is government? Because I'm telling you, my brain is still not wrapped around that. We we're so Too accustomed. early in the morning for that oh, one. Seriously. Uh Oh, let's do it. You want to go to the phones? 458-TALK is the number, 458-8255. Good m- morning, caller. Who's this? Hello? Jim? Jim, go ahead. What's on your mind? Well, you know, we're talking about voting, and I know there are some people out there who are really excited about Romney. I'm, I'm not one of them. <laughs> um, but he, he waves the, the bloody shirt about Russia. And then in the New York Times this morning, he sent his son to send a message to Putin that uh, the campaign rhetoric doesn't mean that he doesn't want good relations with uh, Russia. So, you know, you guys who are being used, uh, being all stirred up about Russia is the next deal with the geopolitical threat for America, um, and, you know, Obama's, Obama's making nice with the Ruskies. we got to get him out. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's the same old, same old. Yeah, I've heard that a lot of times. Wait, wait. Are, are you saying that there's not going to be any perceptible change in our foreign policy, whether we have Obama or Romney? Uh, probably not. But this actually is really good news because I have been taking Romney somewhat as sort of wanting to start World War III. So he's not quite as dangerous as I thought. I mean, you're, you're a little garbled. Are you on a cell phone? Yeah, I, yeah, I'm on a cell phone. Okay, right. may have to have to call back on a landline. Well, I, I have heard that several times. What he's talking about, um, where this whole thing about apparently Obama was overheard telling Putin, or maybe it was Medvedev. Yeah, I think it was Medvedev. That, yeah. that uh, you know, after the election, when I win, I'll be a little more free to do whatever it was. I don't think that was ever clear. It was just whatever, negotiate something. And so everyone's freaking out that oh my gosh, he's gonna turn us. He's just gonna hand the keys to Putin. And we're going to be part of the new Soviet... Well, we already are the... Huh. United Soviet Socialist of America. Well, we're going to join them anyways. And the whole thing is, well, we got to get Romney in there because with Romney, he's going to put his foot down because his rhetoric, just like he said, like Jim was just saying, his rhetoric is he's going to put his foot down, he's going to tell them Ruskies how it is, and he's going to tell the Chinamen how it is, he's going to really protect America, and it's all bunk. It's another thing called a lie. <laughs> Did, is Jim still on? No, well, no, he is dead. Uh, oh, because yeah, his phone, yeah, was crud. phone is garbled. Uh, going back to this issue of whether there's going to be any change, regardless of who we get in. I mean, look at all the change we were promised going from Bush to Obama. Look at all that has changed in the last four years. We we got all of our troops out of Iraq, right? They're all out? Uh, no. 
We got all the troops out of Afghanistan. Didn't we send more? Didn't okay, and we haven't sent troops anyplace else. Oh. Around yeah. the world, right? No, we just send little airplanes with bombs on them now. All except for Libya, Yemen, Pakistan. Hmm. Can and we've sent troops to Africa too. Oh, and you can yeah, guarantee so. we're in we're in Syria. Mm-hmm. Guaranteed. We have forces there. There's no doubt in my mind. Well, that, that's just on the foreign policy side of things. <laughs> I, in, in, economically, what what did we have under Bush in terms of the bailouts and the exact same thing as what exact same thing. Which we got a we got a catastrophe going on at the so, other end of the. Oh, did we have some water spilling over there? In the, we had a young oh, Floydica okay. spill. All <sighs> right. Let's go ahead and move those things out of the way there. The David, Spana, Spana, Spana Floyd. Has Spana Floyd has spilled his water all over the desk. What? What's this? <laughs> yeah, there's no... There's no, there's no mess there. <laughs> I've, Look the other way. I've waved my hand around it. You didn't do that mess. <laughs> the government did. <laughs> Wait did. a minute. <laughs> I think we need to offer him a bailout. Hey, Josh, why don't you take some towels away from Aaron? And give them to uh, to David down there to bail him out. Of course, I'll have to keep 80% for my time and then give David the 20%. Well, Don't worry, David. I'm coming back to get 80% <laughs> from you, too, though. You're not safe. I, I Have you heard anyone, honestly, give a reason for Romney except for the fact that he's not Obama? No. Well, Randy's tried a few times, actually, but uh, no. I think the mentality behind it, though, isn't... isn't I think really the mentality behind it is people want to be free and people want liberty, and they they Not equate. Not very many. In their heart, they do. They think. Especially people that are reluctantly voting for Mitt Romney. That wanted Ron Paul. That wanted something different, and they're giving in. They're voting for Mitt Romney. Why would anybody do that? The only thing that I can think of why anybody would do that is because they equate voting. To liberty. They're trying to vote themselves liberty. I gotta do and that. And if you push the issue at all, that's that's the underlying thought process behind it. They'll anybody that is voting will break down and say we well, have to because this, this, and this. And if you don't, you're this, this, and this. And it's all equated to voting is my liberty. Well, if you don't vote, how do you expect to stay free? Essentially, is what it comes down to. So when did, how do we digress into thinking that voting somebody to lord over us is making ourselves free? It took the government a while to do that. That, that is awesome. I, w- I bet there's a lot of kings from the old days that wish they could have pulled that scam off. I, I had somebody call me this week and tell me how our mm-hmm. founding, you know, they, they're not going to try to convince me to vote that they believe I have the freedom not to, ah. but they don't believe that the founding fathers would have supported my point of view. <laughs> Who cares? There's a bunch of things about the fun, founding fathers I don't support that they did. You mean like slavery? Yeah. Slavery, uh, taxes, Congress, the Senate, President, their Constitution. Well, and, and, I mean, how far well, down back do we the, need to go? Back in the founding fathers, I mean, how universal was suffrage anyway? I mean, you could not vote. No, very if you few. Didn't, if you didn't own property. Uh, very, yeah, and even then. Just, you could not vote if you were a woman. You had to have certain amounts of tracts of land also, too. It wasn't like you went down and bought a, a quarter acre lot and all of a sudden you had voting rights. You had to be like a a man of substance here. You had to be someone that people looked up to and like, yeah. Which makes rich. sense because you definitely wouldn't vote in people that would... Um, Take your property. Right. And that was the reason why that was. What Aaron just said was exactly mm-hmm. the reason. The only reason, the only way you got to vote was if you had land. And the only reason you were allowed to vote if you had land was because they knew you wouldn't vote to take someone's land. Because how many, I think today were, then I believe they were intelligent enough not to vote themselves <laughs> taxes as property tax and stuff. Today, we're exactly the opposite. Mm. We're stupid, and we will not, vote people in middle taxes. Not, well, not entirely, though, too. I think part of it, if you look at because of that universal suffrage issue that we have now, how many people will go down and vote blindly for a bond issue or for any other kind of increase in taxes because they know they, don't they aren't going to have to pay for it? And, and and if they had and look at how many times the sales tax has been voted down 
because the sales tax would go out and get everybody, and everybody doesn't want to have to pay a tax. Yep. You want to increase the property taxes? Oh, sure. Right. The, the sales tax is a good testament to why only property owners should be able to vote in the first place. Yep. We'll be right back with yeah. more. We'd up and leave. We'd up and fly if we had wings for flying. And half a brain. <laughs> like like Dave Diesel. <laughs> no joke. You know, I actually... I, I He's see. doing quite well in that fascist, communist state of Canada. I subscribe to the Dollar Vigilante they uh, talked about. Now, they keep on saying, you need to get out. You need to get your assets and your ass out of the USSA while you still can. Because the time is coming when you will not be able to get out. You will not be able to. And we're already seeing that beginning to snap, uh, to, to clamp down. They are denying uh, passports to people who owe taxes. Yeah, they actually, that's a good public service announcement brought to you by the morning, by Far North Tactical. I'm going to give a public announcement for him. They are clamping down on passports, period. Requirements that they're going to have before they'll give you one, they just like shot up. Things that they're going to require you, the information that they're going to require from you to give to them before they'll give you one is going to be quite a bit more intrusive. Basically, just so you won't get one. It's and that's why you need to vote for Obama, Josh. Oh, speaking of which, I got to hear, We were, all of our ears were desecrated while we got to hear Romney get on the radio on, at the half hour break there, and he said that... Uh, you know, we're going to get in there, we're going to cap this thing, and we're going to get the budget under control, we're going to finally balance this budget. Well, okay. <laughs> Wait, that's how, a, I've never heard that before. How do you balance a budget? Don't you either, you either have to add or subtract, right? So you either have to take away spending or add income, which Reminds would be taxes. Me, another classical, right? A classic. Should from, we cap it? <laughs> top it. Something, another classic deal from uh, Robin Hood right there. Hey, is that there uh, adding or subtracting? <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's a lie. If anyone thinks that he's going to balance the budget, you really should... Shoot yourself. No. <laughs> Vote for Obama. You should at least have yourself institutionalized or something because you're, you're a danger to yourself. Basically, because if you think that he is going to balance the budget, you're not listening to him because he's already shown us what Ryan's budget is, and he doesn't balance it until 2030. Wait, wait, wait. Well, 2030, that's well after the 2016 election. No, um, he's going to be supreme dictator for life. And then uh, with that balanced budget, the other part that he forgets to tell us is that he's going to have the debt will be up another $7 trillion by the time he supposedly balances the budget. Medicaid spending, he's going to spend like, ah, oh, what is it? He wants to spend, you know, these these are the social and conservatives, you know, the guys that protect our taxes, what everyone thinks, and yet... Romney Ryan's plan is to spend like seven I don't remember if it's seventy or seven hundred billion more on Medicaid than Obama. Obama and Mitt Romney. So when what the guy just proved our point. I guess we could go home because we just had this guy get on there and tell us he's gonna in one of his campaign speeches he's gonna knock back and balance the budget and it is a lie. And he also says that he's not going to raise your taxes because I'm Mitt Romney. I've made bazillions of dollars off of us. I mean, he was involved in the whole scandal with the housing scandal and all that stuff. He's made crony money, folks. He's a thief and a crook. Okay, great. But so he's not he Obama. No, he's not. Obama, did, Obama obviously wasn't smart enough to get to screw the American people as quite as good as Mitt Romney has. Of course, he wants to give back now. That's why he's running for president, because he's George Washington. doesn't actually really want to be, but he wants to give back. So he's also telling us, you know, another big thing that we hear is that Mitt Romney is not going to raise our taxes. Well, that is also a lie. And we're going to have our newest Austrian economist, Israel, tell us why it is. And no, I didn't tell him to say this. He already knew. 
why it is, how is Mitt Romney not going to steal from us in taxes, even though he promises to lower them? Well, first of all, I read this book oh, called gosh. Whatever Happened to Penny Candy. That's your problem, you're reading. Richard Mayberry. And uh, it it teaches a lot of amazing things. I I read it in a couple of days, and I was really blown away by what I read. It talks about inflation and whatnot, but anywho, uh, so Mitt Romney, I've watched a couple of the presidential debates, and uh, he says a lot of stuff like uh, um, lowering taxes on the middle class, on the lower class, whoever, but then he also talks about going to war in countries and raising military spending. So how is he going to lower taxes and still pay for all these things? Oh, please well, tell me. the answer is inflation. The government, or Mitt Romney, when he is elected, if he is elected, is going to print so much money that to pay for his things if he lowers taxes, if he lowers taxes... He will print so much money to pen, pay for his stuff that money will go out into the world and lower the value of the dollar. Lowering the value of the dollar makes it so you have to spend more money and you will have inflation. Makes your money worth less. Yes. I, I thought the reason why things cost more is because of the... Prices went up? No, because people are trying to get more money out of me. They're trying to make more, $500 million a week out of out of <laughs> my my oil. Isn't that why the prices are going up? It's because they're, those, the stupid people want profit? Isn't that isn't that it? The stupid people are the stupid people are us because we listen to a jackass like that telling us he's going to lower taxes, but he's going to print more money and steal it right back through inflation. I mean, these guys got the game rigged. It's rigged. Don't go do it. Isn't gold cheap? Uh, pretty cheap right now comparatively, and as far as the gold standard goes. I heard that gold's actually a little bit lower it, than it was about 20 yeah. years ago. In terms of the actual purchasing oh, power? Oh, yeah, purchase power? Sure, yeah. absolutely. I, in I, other uh, words, you mean as in an inflation? Yeah. Right now, our dollar adjusted is Adjusted for worth... inflation, oil's actually a Cheap. lot lower than it was 20 years ago. Right. When you look at uh, our dollar right now, in 2009... I. In 2009, our dollar bill, which it's not really a dollar, it's a piece of paper. I mean, if or, or, I'm going to give a bunch Toilet of uh, I'm going to give a bunch of copies of whatever having a penny candy to Aaron to put in the store. Anybody yeah, out there want to understand right anything about? I mean, this is a really simple book to read, and you'll understand a little bit about economics enough to enough to where you'll know more than most of your friends at least. Our I went dollar, to school, Josh. I our, took economics. Yeah. So our dollar in 2009 was worth five cents of what it was in 1913. So, so the value went down 95 percent. Right. And today I've read, and I don't know this for sure. I've just read it off someone's blog. They said it was worth two percent. So I don't know that for a fact. But prices have not gone up. Is what people don't really figure out. Our money's gone down, and our money's gone down. Well, one, because they've taken the gold out and the silver out and all that good stuff, but also because of inflation. Because every time these guys get the printing presses going on, your dollar's worth less. Every single time, they're stealing from you. That's what nobody realizes, Dad, that anything that the government says they're going to do, where where are they going to get the money to pay for that stuff? Right. Besides stealing it? Oh, no, wait, either way you look at it, you're stealing it. What I like. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Through inflation or taxation. Right. So if you're holding $10 in your pocket and the government prints $20 more and makes your dollars only worth $5, you're still being ripped off. Now you only have five. Right. As far as purchasing power goes, I don't understand why nobody gets that. It doesn't seem like anybody under. Is that. What do they teach people in school? I didn't go. I don't know. Yeah. Steve. Well, I, I can tell you from a, a business perspective, they, they, as far as I can tell, they try to ignore the monetary policy so and, and leave it to other people and focus only instead on profit margins. And so basically, the, you end up, if you're going to be in business, you got to play the game and raise the prices or you go out of business. You, you, 
they don't teach you about inflation or currency manipulation or anything else like that because it is pointless. You cannot fight as an individual businessman the inflation. If somebody's out there dumping a whole bunch of money into circulation, you can't fight it or you will go under. I mean, think about it. You try to keep your prices stable. Right. You try to keep your prices stable while everybody else's prices are going up. Yeah, people come to your store, but then you're not going to be able to buy anything to restock your store with. Yeah, and then what you get when that stuff's going on is that uh, to call it uh, velocity, yeah. the money starts changing hands, and it changes hands faster, 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 inflation, douche. Mm-hmm. And it's coming, baby. It's going to hit here. Yeah, I don't know they're, how. They're, they've been doing some pretty tricky things to stave it off, and one of, the, one of the cooler things that they're doing is they're changing the size of your product. Like if you go to oh yeah that is so, yeah. Tri- it's so tricky. <laughs> if you go to Sam's Club, your 50 pound bag of rice, it's, even though the price did go up some, it's 40. They changed it to a 40 pound bag of rice, <laughs> so on and so forth. Your box is a cereal changing size. Um, just putting one less granola bar in, and if you if you look close and if you start paying attention, you'll see that most of your products are following that trend. And it's a, it's a crafty way to um, you know reduce the Reduce the overall, uh, well, to maximize their profit, obviously, but it's to reduce the effects of inflation. It's not about trying to maximize profit. It's trying. It's about trying to stay in business. Well, right. That's what uh, people are trying. You, you, they want to stay alive. I don't you know anybody blame, that went into business to make it, not make money. Well, I mean, if you want to blame somebody for it, don't blame the businessman. I'm not. Blame the freaking politicians who are pumping worthless money into the yeah, system. Yeah, that we're going to vote for on November 6th. For a change, because I'm, I'm well, not. what do you want? Obama? What do you want, Josh? You want Obama? I want Obama. Oh, Obama. Right, but <laughs> whether <laughs> we've got to play that clip. Whether you got uh, either one of them, the printing press is not going to stop. Romney's not going to all of a sudden stop the printing press and bring back a gold standard and solve anything at all. He's going to keep it. It's just what Israel said. Prices he's already promised. Yeah, he's promised more wars. He, he has promised more wars, people. I mean, have you figured that out? Does yeah, that not Josh, bother anyone? what do you want? You want Obama? I think most people do want more wars. I mean, you listen to the people on the street yeah, I've about actually how much we need to go and kick Iran's butt. Why? What have they done to us? They are daring, daring, I tell you, to defend themselves by getting weapons that match ours. Well, they could be here at any moment, Steve. Of course, they can't. They can't make enough rice to feed themselves. They don't have enough gas to produce for their own vehicles, but they could be here at any minute. That's because I don't even know. They can't. You going to roll smoke? Uh, I'm going to quote something out of whatever happened to Penny Candy. Oh, really? Um, It says here, in an election, it is important to be aware of the lie. The lie is, I will give you what you want, and you will never need to pay for it. I will force someone else to pay for it. The candidate who can tell the lie the most convincingly is the one who wins the election. Oh, snap. And then it goes on, actually, after that to say, but the the reason that it's a lie is because there's no such thing as a free lunch. All four of our lines are on hold right now. Should we do this? Food? Sure. All right, 458 Talk is a number. Good morning, caller. Thanks for your patience. Who's this? Good morning. Hey, who is this? It's Cecily. Good morning, Cecily. What's on your mind? Well, I, I uh, had some uh, things to say it, uh, about uh, religious and stuff, too, that people um, use to get a, above. But I wrote down that now that if you have seen you that, that you know God, you stand poised on his throne with a large Bible ready to aim at anyone different than you. You cannot place guilt upon the innocent, and you cannot lift it from the guilty. That is uh, from uh, Khalil Gibran. But I was just very um, happy that that uh, the religious leaders are n- not my God. And then the the other thing about being dependent, when you are dependent upon the dollar... Um, it, it, it and always think you're not going to have enough. That will be true. Argue your limitations, and sure enough, they're yours, kind of thing. I, I did work hard so that I could have a, a easy retirement, 
and and I really went for the dollar and and made plenty, and then I was robbed, and so I uh, gave up the idea of going for the money, and it seems that um, I get everything I need even without it, and so um, anyway, it's it's the dependency on something that isn't real mm. might uh, put in your mind to to give that up, and you'll see all you need come to you. Wow, thanks, Cecily. Thank you. Appreciate the uh, comment. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning. This is the Saturday morning wake-up call. Who's this? Yeah, this is Hillbilly. Hillbilly, good morning. What's on your mind? Well, you said that you don't understand why people don't understand the economy, so I wanted to give you another example in out of my own life. When I came up here to Alaska, I uh, started picking blueberries, and I don't always accept Federal Reserve notes, but when I do... When I began to accept Federal Reserve notes for blueberries, I started at $15 a gallon. And if I had a five-gallon bucket, 15 times five is $75. So when I said I wanted $15 a gallon, the guy would pick up the whole bucket and walk off and go, here you go, $75, I'm glad to get it. Well, that tells me as a businessman that my prices are too low. Because a businessman, what he looks for is he wants the person to go, hmm, okay. That's the perfect balance. That's the dynamic tension. When your customer thinks about it and goes, ooh, that's a little bit tough, but I want them. That's the perfect balance. That is what they call what the market will bear. So it wasn't very long before I had it at $40 a gallon, and nobody was complaining. Everybody was looking at it going, mm, okay, and they were buying my berries, a gallon or two gallons at a time. That was perfect. Now, since that time, people will grab more berries and therefore I raise my prices. Right now they're at 60. Last season I was easily able to get 60. Nobody complained badly. Most people thought about it a few seconds and then bought their berries. So that's how a businessman has to set his prices so that he's maximizing his profits. And so therefore you can tell that in the local area the value of money has gone down by 50%. Because what used to be 40 is now 60. So therefore, that's that's the balance. And that's true with everything. And prices do go up. They just don't count the price of food or fuel and a few other items. And they, they juggle the numbers. But the prices are going up. The more money they print, the more they inflate the economy. And the amount of money, the more the prices will go up. Until finally, they'll start going up more and more rapidly. And of course, we'll have hyperinflation, and then people will notice it. Right now, people can pretend not to notice it. But right now, prices are going up quicker than your salary, if you just keep track. The other thing I wanted to say is this. The reason we can't change it is because we do not have people with enough honor that they are willing to put their money on the line. When we fought for our freedom before, we pledged to one another our fortunes, meaning we gave up our fortune in order to give our children freedom. And until each individual that's listening to this program and agreeing with the economic problem is seeing the problem, until they're willing to say, well, I'll tell you what, I will impoverish myself if necessary so that I can provide freedom for my children, well, then the thing's not going to change. So there's no real reason to continue to complain. Whether you vote or whether you don't vote, I maintain that you do not have a right to complain so long as you keep bowing the knee to the beast and paying your taxes. You need to rearrange your life so that you're not feeding the beast. Then you have a right to complain if you want to, but you won't need to because it is possible to live inside the system. It's possible to do it. And yeah, I know, you have to give up a lot of your fortune, but you gain a lot back in true wealth. Well, a large majority of the founders ended up um, totally impoverished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. from the revolution. It's because they stood for something and they, they stood by their principles and that's that's a very rare thing. Hill Bailey, I really admire the way in which you do live your life and in terms of uh, standing for your principles. I also, I, I don't know if you caught it, but the very first thing you said made me think of uh, what's going on on Facebook right now with the most interesting man in the world. You know, I don't always I don't always accept Federal Reserve notes, but when I do, I just was thinking, my, you are the most interesting <laughs> hillbilly in the world. Well, I appreciate the example because it was uh, 
right here in Fairbanks yeah, example, and exactly. it's really easy to understand. He's he's talking about inflation. He he sees yeah. it, and he's a businessman, so he knows how he needs to operate with it. I'm not, I'm not a businessman. Oh. I'm a private citizen right. selling my own personal possessions. There's a big difference. Okay, yes, there is. But okay. selling your own personal personal uh, property, you, at the same time, you also understand economics enough to where you need to raise your prices at times. Right. Both private individuals and businessmen still are bound by the economic laws. That's a fact. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Did you want to take this, another call, or did you want to, me to play this on the, the web? Well, we have a special from the presidential debate we wanted to play this is the uh, one they didn't they didn't uh televise it says the video has been removed by the user oh oh so seriously yeah that's going to play it and it just popped up and said this video has been removed by the user so i wonder if mitt bonnie got after him (laughs) somebody did four five eight talk the number good morning welcome to the wake-up call who's this this is randy good morning randy what's on your mind today well, you were talking about the presidential election, Romney, Obama, and whether or not Romney could keep all these promises or these statements that he's been saying. I don't know if he could or not, you know, balance the budget. That's a tall order. But I think Aaron uh, Bennett there uh, hit on something some weeks ago, uh, some months ago maybe, and he was he. what I recall you, Aaron, saying was that you thought if Romney got elected, that at least for a time, not for the long term, but at least for a short term, Business would kind of like go up, boom, or do better, way better. I actually asked um, Richard Mayberry that question, and he's he said that I was I was tracking. But we were talking about malinvestment, which if I guess if if you're kind of putting the spin on it that you know there there's a good motivation to vote for him. Uh, malinvestment will just increase how hard something falls. It's, um, to to stave off um, for two or three years hyperinflation just makes it hyper hyperinflation so i wasn't advocating for uh-huh. um we should vote for mitt romney because i mean that's well, let's push it off to posterity i mean we might as well push this off all the way to until josh's kids and my kids are our age i mean why not as long as we can you know hopefully we can get social security right well yeah. i don't think we're going to be able to kick the can down the road because we're kind of at the dead end the can hit the wall and can't go anywhere. No, and they didn't I, pave any more roads. I'm talking like, it, you know, in everybody's time preference of how they view things is going to be different. But as long as it doesn't happen in my lifetime, right? And I'm talking okay. a Mitt Romney scenario of um, of of malinvestment would, you know, give us two good years of um, more hyperinflation. That's assumed, though. People that assume, is assume that that would happen, but we don't really know what Romney would do. I mean, he might get first thing he might do. He already has said that he'll call China uh, a mm-hmm. uh, currency, currency manipulator. manipulator. Who knows what kind of trade war that could impose? Mm-hmm. That could start off hyperinflation immediately. And it could turn to a shooting war very easily. Even also, easy. China could just call their debt. Well, that's, that's not for, forget the economics. Look at the personal liberties aspect. If you're voting for Romney because you think he's going to be your economic savior and you're ignoring what he has said he would do to your personal liberties, then you are a moron. Because look at what's happening right now. You've already got the excuses on both sides because of this hurricane on the East Coast for them to be able to call this election a fraud. Both sides have already already made their case in the public eye about all of the problems that we are going to see on Tuesday. And and it's true. I mean, there are polling places that are still underwater. And then both sides, they're... uh both sides, as far as the federal government's involvement mm-hmm. in the disaster, there's no difference in what each other believes in that Exactly, either. and and they have both they have both admitted. Well, yes, the other guy agrees with me on all of these policies and all of these issues. Now, what if after the election, Romney wins and we have riots in certain neighborhoods? Would we not see a federal police state descend upon us? Oh wait, I guess we already have one to a certain degree. In fact, I had some uh, some friends in New York City right now that said that they really believe they feel like they're under martial law right now. Oh, I'm sure they are. In New York City. They don't because have to declare it anymore. Well, because of the, I mean, it's been kind of creeping in, but because of that disaster that happened because of the hurricane, now they are not free to go outside on the street without permission from their masters. Nice. They can't, I mean, it is it is martial law in New York City right I now. I they don't advertise that on the news. 
Oh, they can't, because then it would start to erode this illusion that we are the freest nation on earth. Yeah, that we oh sure we have problems, but we're the most we're the freest nation, we're the best nation that's ever lived. Yeah. Uh, it would it would start to erode that illusion. Right now we already have martial law in New York City, and and that's just because of the disaster. What if we had? I mean, if you want to talk about what ifs, what if we had a couple of riots? It would be so easy to declare a national emergency and require that anybody who goes outside their door have a destination in mind and be able to prove that they are going to a place that is authorized to go to. Oh, yeah, easy. Well, no. I, they were already under martial law with Bloomberg. You couldn't even buy a 16-ounce or a 17-ounce soda pop. Well, that's not martial law. That's just ridiculous law. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, to think that you're going to have the government protect you because, you know what, if you want 17 ounces, you're going to have to go. You, you're you're going to have to buy a, a, another 16-ounce soda. You're going to have to know that you're actually doing something that's, that's uh, unhealthy for you. So if someone served a 17-ounce, they could get shot in the head. I, the well, United. I guess if you take it to the extreme, yeah. I mean, you could be arrested. And but it's not arrest. extreme. It's the truth. No different than a parking ticket or anything. You can get shot in the head if you don't comply with that no. nothingness. And, but and, 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 if you don't, saying, and if you don't think it, a, a parking ticket would get you shot in the head, that is exactly what happened with one of these police shootings here in uh, Anchorage just last week. Or maybe it was two weeks ago. They were attempting a, uh, a traffic stop for a ridiculous. Yeah. It, it, it was it, it was either a failure to come to a complete stop or a, tra- a tail light was out or something else like that. And uh, yeah, you can get shot in the head over ridiculous infractions. So you know, welcome to the police state. Yeah, it's going to be interesting what happens. Going back to what you said about New York, mm-hmm. that could be that could turn real interesting. And going back to, oh, go ahead. I just. Um, in fairness to Randy, Randy yeah, I was um, gonna... basically, to, what I'm saying is, is um, America, the Americans right this minute are doing something they haven't done since the time, since since after World War II, um, and this was after the Depression, so it followed the same kind of trend. Um, Americans right now are paying off all their debt. And that's what's that's what's got the economy so stagnant because our economy depends on um, the exchange, right? Velocity, right? On velocity. So everybody's saving their money. And all I was saying is, if Mitt Romney gets voted in for a very short amount of time, people will um, throw away that illusion they should save their money and They'll pay off their it, debt. But and that's just a it. theory. It's not necessarily true. It could right. be ten times worse. All right. Uh, thanks we for don't the, know what will happen. Okay. Thanks for the calls this hour. We'll be back with another hour. Patriots Lament is up next right after the Fox News here on KFAR Local Talk Radio. And welcome to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. I am Steve Floyd. I am just the button, uh, the button pusher here, so to speak. And if I can't push the buttons on the uh, council, I'll try to push your buttons this morning. Uh, Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises, one of the people who actually is the brainchild behind... Well, you're the one that came up with this idea, you and Aaron, your brother here from Foreign North Tactical. Yeah. And it's uh, and this is your program, so uh, uh, you've got something that back. that you want me to play. For... We've been here like a, a year and a half, I think, this show. Yeah. Huh. Ready? We've done we get no this. good yet. Welcome to the first 2012 debate for the presidency of the United States of America. Obama, Romney, Obama, Romney, Obama, Romney, Obama, Romney, 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 Obama, Romney, Obama, Romney, Obama, Romney, Obama, Romney, meow meow, Obama, meow meow, Romney, Barack Hussein Obama, Mitt Jagger Romney, Obama. Ron Paul. <laughs> that was absolutely ridiculous. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, you can look that up on YouTube. Presidential Debate 2012. It's an animated short there. You've got uh, basically Obama and Romney just saying each other's names. And then this uh, fellow shooting guns off running across the stage was Ron Paul at the end. Yeah, the, the, that's the essence of uh, the, the presidential debates. debate because they're two peas in the same pod. So the only thing they can do is bash on each other. 
Well, he's Mitt Romney. Yeah, well, he's Barack Hussein Obama. He's Mitt Jagger. <laughs> what? Mitt Jagger? <laughs> What's, I mean, if we just listen to the top of the hour news again, they're both the same. Well, Obama was saying Mitt Romney. Then uh, right after that, they had Mitt Romney saying Obama. And what does Mitt Romney promise? I mean, we obviously do not like Barack Obama at all. We just can't stand the fact that some people think that Mitt Romney will be better. What is he saying? He goes, he promised to come in here, and he said that he's going to change Social Security. He's going to fix it, and he's going to fix Medicaid. And what did he do? Well, he just he came out here, and he didn't have a plan, and he took $718 billion out of Medicaid. Okay, social fiscal conservatives. That was code word for I will pump more money into those programs. That's exactly what that meant because he's promising more money. The guy who promises the most and is the most convincing in his promises, which are lies, wins. Social Security, though, and all those social programs have become that third rail that you dare not touch even if you are a supposed fiscal conservative, to suggest that we that the government should not be responsible for taking people taking care of people in their old age or their retirement or if they get sick, it's like sacrilege to people, even though it completely violates the mar- the free market principle, even though it, it's it's socialist. It is. It makes a mockery of freedom, and yet so many people who are, uh, supposedly conservative cling on to this because they have either benefited from it directly or hope they will. It's just like Greece's problem. Yeah. And it's funny, you hear people say if we leave Obama in, then we're going to be just like Greece. But Mitt Romney's saying if we put him in, he's going to Spend adopt more. Greece's, Greece's policies. <laughs> I, I, you know, I think I, love, I just lost a brain. I love <laughs> Randy. Call, he calls in because he's. I think he's sincere in trying to figure out if he can just get one grain of positive of why he should vote for Romney. I mean, that's all he's done the last few months. We've been talking about politics and voting. Is that he's trying to find the one thing that can justify his vote for him over Barack Obama, and he's not going to do it. There is no difference. Oh, no, there's Poli- a reason. The policy Mitt Romney's a Republican. Ch- oh, that's true. And but I, it's like we've talked about in the past. A Republican and a Democrat are just two wings, the right and the left, but they're attached to the same bird. Nothing will change. Do yourself a favor and get a little bit of self-worth in yourself. I mean, something. Just don't do it. You, you, You'll feel better about it. You will feel better knowing that you weren't a part of that happening. When I when I talk to someone who is committed to the ideal of we must go out and participate in the process, we must vote, even if the only options that we have are a pile of cat poo or a pile of dog poo, we have to choose one. So let's go out and choose the one that smells the least bad or the one that's going to be the, the least worse for our country. People are so dedicated to that and, and refusing to step away from the table when all that's being served is cat poo and dog poo. They remind me of a battered wife, of someone who has been so beat up that they think that somehow they deserve it. They have been so abused by a person that they love that they feel but, that, that, that they find themselves justifying not only the person but also the behavior and, and as if somehow they deserved to be beaten. Isn't that what it sounds like with these people that, that say, well, you've got to go out there and vote? All right, but I think the biggest argument oh. there is um, oh. is how do you affect change unless you do vote? I mean, what are you doing if you're not voting? Well, I that's can, the big question. That, there's a really good. I mean, we've had several people on this radio program who are a lot smarter than us give us ideas of what we should do besides going out and vote that would affect change. You can't change the world by force, nor should you want to. The only thing you can change and help is yourself, and by doing that, you're able to help some people around you or your neighbors or whatever. You are not going to affect change in Washington D.C. You, none of us personally, none of us combined, are going to make a change. Instead of people have spent so much time, I mean, there's hopefully there's at least three or four people listening still, and maybe one or two of them have p- participated in the political section this year. They spent time holding signs or they're spending money, giving money to political programs, political uh, parties and politicians and stuff. 
you just wasted your time and you wasted your money. That's all there is to it. It's a waste. What you should have done, maybe, if you want to ask, well, what could we have done otherwise? Well, the thousand bucks that you sent to, or five hundred or fifty bucks that you, let's say fifty, the fifty dollars you sent to Mitt Bomney, you could have went out and bought an ounce of silver with it. And let me tell you, that is more valuable than you going to vote for a politician. One ounce of silver is. By far, the time that you spent trying to get someone elected, you could have spent maybe doing anything. But, I mean, I always say make a peanut butter sandwich because that, that's more effective than going to vote. But you could have maybe found a better job, maybe spent a little more time with your family or spent more time doing something of value. There is something more valuable. Anything is more valuable. When they say, when someone says, well, what would you do? Anything is more valuable than the political system because it will not change. We are coming to, I mean, we are on the verge of political and economic collapse in this country. There's no way out of it. Nobody's going to get elected to change that. It's not going to happen. We're going to collapse economically. It's all the warning signs are there. All the real economists have been telling us for quite a while, this is coming. Instead of worrying about who's going to be the president, you should be concerned about how you can make your life a little bit better. I mean, what's the, the end of the, the ad there with the kids? They say, my people perish for lack of knowledge. The knowledge is right there, and you're going to perish because you're listening to the lie. What, one of the things that Aaron has brought up several times over the last year and a half has been the aspect of people ignoring the barbarian at the gate. Uh, Carthage right. was in the midst of a political campaign while they were under siege. While they were under siege, while their very existence of their society was hanging by a thread, instead of going out there and manning the walls, which might have saved their civilization, they were busy pointing the finger and yelling at each other in a political campaign. The amazing thing about that is um, Hannibal, who we all, um, even our uh, military men of today still study Hannibal's tactics, uh, some of the tactics that he used were beyond revolutionary. I mean, they, they haven't replaced them to this day. His uh, double envelopment ideology was just mind-boggling that he was that smart. He uh, he made a career out of handing the Romans their butt mm-hmm. and um, with much inferior forces. But a lot of people don't know that at the end of his campaign was the end of Carthage. And... Because of his influence, his popularity, because of how much he won, the political atmosphere back home, he had zero support. He did that all out of hand, out of a promise that he made to his dad that he would exact revenge on the Romans. But uh, politically, he could get no support because they feared him when he, if he did win, they, they Carthage at the political process purposely kept him from winning and ultimately brought on their own demise because... Political power was more important to them than this outside Roman threat. They refused to support him in any way, shape, or form because when he, if he came home, he would have wielded political power. He would have definitely ran for an office of some kind. And so his enemies at home that were jockeying for political power purposely went out of their way to undermine him and ultimately brought down their whole country. There's your political process. That was the beginning of what you see happened when... Um, Rome was bashing down their gates. And that's what we see right now with fighting over this political party, this presidential election, not realizing the enemy that's at the gate, which is basically a financial enemy right now. It's an economic enemy, and it's coming down. There's no way out of it. I I guess people just don't want to hear that, or they don't really believe it. Or they've been taught Keynesian economics their whole life. that, That it'll never end... Even though we see it happening in Europe at a much rapid pace, much more rapid pace, and we still think that it won't happen here when we're doing the exact same policies, following the exact same policies. Have been. That's that's what people can't grasp. They think for a hundred years, new in it or something like that. Mm -hmm. The policy's been. We changed our policy the minute we went off the gold standard and started um, when we became actually the. The spelling of our de- our major demise was when we became the world's currency. 
I, 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 yeah. I mean, there, there were we seeds sowed, though. I mean, you can you can go back to 1913 back. easily, but you could also go back to uh, Abraham Lincoln's presidency. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the the war between the states, and uh, we just last night, my wife and I watched a, a really fun movie, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer, <laughs> or uh, Vampire Hunter, or whatever. I, I forget exactly. What, I mean, yeah, it was funny. It was it was uh, it was a fun movie. Um, but I I kind of feel like that's we could have that kind of mythology about Lincoln. That he killed vampires as much as we can that he saved the Union. What what happened with the Union under Lincoln was that we replaced the form of government that we had, in which we, they were states that governed themselves, and then only came to the the national government for or, or the federal government. I mean, that's the that's the big difference is that it was a federal government and the states cooperated together as opposed to having a national government. When did we start having a national currency? Was it not under Abraham Lincoln? Yeah. Okay. That is one of the part of the big problems right there. And and yeah, slavery was a big issue. It was a big. I mean, it was a it was a serious evil that had to be dealt with. It had nothing to do with Abraham Lincoln's war. But it, ex- well, you know, that's 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 the whole thing is that we have been led to believe that it was about freeing the slaves. I think it was more about enslaving. All of us. Yeah, they've changed history so we don't look at what really happened, so we don't understand that literally, I mean, there's several things that happened before, but the war with the states, Lincoln's war destroyed us. That's the end. The United States of America ceased to exist. Right. And now, and, and it is a, na- it has been a national government ever since. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and now we have a national bank, privately held, that's printing money with no backing, and it's at 17 trillion. I mean, here we are again at the end of the year. If they don't raise the debt ceiling, we're going to default. How long do you think that can happen where you can just vote to raise how much money you can borrow? I mean, that's so stupid and who are, you, who are they borrowing money from? And this is this well, is what now no one will no one will exactly loan us money exactly we borrow money from ourselves. Yeah, if you look at what we did the very last time here when the. Fed issued all those bonds. We put them out, and nobody would buy them. Nobody. And because and people not got, even the Chinese. Right. The Chinese. Their reason was is they finally got smart, which boggles my mind. It took them so long, but they said if we buy these bonds from you, the ones that we currently ho- hold become worth less. Right. Because they already had a trillion. If they would have bought more, inflation. So we borrowed money from ourselves. Even, we, we even, the, money. even the communists understand capitalism enough to <laughs> yeah. know that they shouldn't participate in that. Yeah, no joke. So, I mean, how great would that be here in your own home? You're like, man, I'm going broke. I need to I need to get some bonds. I need to get something just, to loan me some money. Why don't you just write yourself a check, John? I'll just write myself a check. Yeah. Well, I'll pay myself back at some point. With the full backing of the federal Of yourself. Reserve. What I really like to know is, so if we borrowed the money from the Federal Reserve, we basically borrowed it, quote unquote, from ourselves. So who do we really owe it to? Well, that's a that's a really good question. Maybe we should just cancel the debt. I'm all for that. You know, we just say, you know, kind of start over, declare bankruptcy. And oh, it's a coming. Well, It'll be canceled from default. Yeah. Bankruptcy. And, and think about how many we are. By the way, I don't know if we've talked the last time since I, I had the updated figure. We are at 70 percent of the people in this borough. Oh, yeah. 70 percent work for government at one layer or another. What happens when they don't get paid? What happens when there is literally no way to pay them? Well, the government will save us. I don't think so. I mean, this is what happened. This is how the Soviet Union went down in 1991. Yeah, I'd like like to... Soldiers walked off the job. You could actually look to see who government was then. Do you guys remember a couple months ago when we almost weren't able to pay the army? We were about three months late. We almost had our own little Russia go on here. That was nationwide, of course. Mm -hmm. They almost didn't pay the army. And it was actually right when they were deploying. Um, It kind of hurt my business a little bit because every army guy for 100 miles of this area was coming in one to gear up to go to Afghanistan and they all got paid about a week before they shipped out and man they went nuts but I would have done a lot better obviously if they had been paid on time they were all trying to get geared up to go go over there a lot of them didn't get uh, a lot of them just ordered things and I shipped them to uh, Afghanistan after the fact for them but 
a lot of them didn't get the things that they needed to go over there, which really is a poor reflection on us, I'd have to say. If on, you're going to uh, take the... On, on the country, you mean? Sure. Yeah. On the politicians. Uh, right. And if... Uh, I'd like to digress just a little bit and explain how our money's even worth something at all to people that don't understand that. And I mean, currently, they call it the petrodollar, but the, the ideology is the same for how our money's always been worth something. And we're not a producer nation, uh, we're a consumer nation, so technically, by default, our money should be um, totally worthless. Any consumer nation, that their GDP is below what their... Um, taking in they're obviously their money is worth a lot less and that's how you know if you look at your money and look at monies around the globe um you know the philippines our dollar to their dollar is like 35 and so on and so forth right that all depends on how much they produce versus how much they um how much they um, consume right so america being the biggest consumer nation our money should be absolutely worth the least but the reason it's not is because we are the world's currency. And what that means is that one nation trades with another nation with our money. So if Josh is Pakistan and I'm Iran and Josh wants to buy oil from me, he uses U.S. Treasury bonds to buy my oil. And that's how our money stays stays abreast in the world economy. So when you have some place like China that says – and they, they trade – they basically they trade our debt. They hold notes of our debt, Right. And so if they decide they're not going to buy any more of our debt, we've come to a pretty bad crunch. And this last go around, as we just explained, everybody refused to buy our debt to trade with each other for world goods. So we went ahead and bought the debt from ourselves. Has any, has any, are we the first to ever do that? That's called monetizing the debt, and it was promised that it would not happen. Yeah. We were promised we will not monetize the debt, but they ended up having to monetize the debt or else we would have seen inflation. So we kicked the can down the road yeah, just exactly. a little bit more and it's going to be twice as bad. Yeah. I mean, and, and there's there's your answer to your Mitt Romney question. It also explains an awful lot about why we are involved in so many wars right now. I mean, how many of the nations that we are currently got boots on the ground in have stopped using the American dollar to trade their petrol and instead are using gold? All of them that we've attacked... Every single country that we've done black ops, CIA ops, and went in and turned over their governments, they all follow a pattern all the way to Saddam Hussein, have all tried to stop using the petrodollar to trade. So and isn't that part of the issue right now with Iran? Sure. They, they have stopped using the dollar there, only using gold. And, and right, I thought India has done that now, too. Yeah, they're going to trade with Iran, I think, with gold. If you... Um, if you look at our reasons to go to war, the the reason that our politicians call upon is um, American interests, and mm -hmm. we have to do this to Libya, we have to do this to Egypt, whatever, because of American interests. Well, that's what they're talking about. The American interest is the petrodollar, and it, it is a necessity to attack all these nations that um, say they're going to stop trading in our dollar. We have to do it, and if we don't do it, then we'll have an economic collapse, and none of us want to deal with that. You mean someone might quit using the pound sterling? <laughs> oh, are you saying this has happened before? Uh, yep. Are you saying that the British went around and pounded down anybody that tried to stop using their sterling? <laughs> they didn't do good enough. They didn't do good enough. In the 1970s, they handed it over to us, and we ceased to be a producer nation and became a consumer nation. Mm -hmm. Which is great. I mean, there's lots of parties and fanfare, circuses and bread. Yeah, I mean, uh, the average person, the standard of living for, you know, the the low, the low lowliest goes way up for a short amount of time. Yeah, but also, the argument is that, well, we're richer than we've ever been, but we're not because we also have more debt than the world's ever known. Even e individuals have more debt than the world's... I mean, no one's had the ability to be in debt like we are now. Rome gave us a good run for our money, but we, we surpassed them quite a while ago. Yeah, they, they're... I, I've, I've heard it argued that the, the real demise of Rome wasn't because they were spread too thin militarily, although they were. It wasn't because they had moral corruption in every layer of government, although they did. It wasn't because the people had forgotten their gods and were going out and living uh, crazy lifestyles that undermined the, the Roman way of life, although that was true too. The real issue of why Rome fell 
was because Rome debased their currency. Mm -hmm. If you look at the pattern of every country that meets their demise, that it follows that pattern, the debasing of the currency. I mean, Dave Giesel's ran down that list a couple of times back when he was on here, and they all follow that pattern. They debase their currency. And we're, we're debased to 2%. 2%. 2%. Sounds so. like the milk people drink. So we got to get like two more. Yeah, how watered down is that? It's, <laughs> it's 2% milk and 98% water. Uh, how far, though, I mean, how much farther can we go before it really is uh, an actually an economic collapse when you cannot buy, sell, or trade anything? I don't think we really know, but it uh, certainly could be any minute. I mean, while we're on this show, it could happen. Something could happen in the world, and bam, it's over. Did anyone mention we're screwed? <laughs> no, Thank you for we're going to vote. <laughs> Thank you for that beautiful this look at the future. This is why you need to vote for Romney. Obama. Hi. Romney. <laughs> 458 Talk is the number. You've got it on Patriots Lament on KFAR. It's local talk radio. All right, welcome back. As we're running through the forest together here on Patriots Lament, we've been uh, pretty much focused on uh, economics the last uh, hour plus uh, today. And it, it seems to me that uh, we have equated as long as we can, as long as we're financially okay, then it really doesn't matter if our, our liberties are gone. I, and that, isn't that the way people are living right now? It really doesn't matter that we don't have freedom of movement in our country. It really doesn't matter that you don't have that that the Fourth Amendment is basically null and void. That Trashed. You 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 can be searched without a warrant by whoever is wearing a badge or a costume, and you have nothing to say about it. You can go to jail if you resist being searched. Uh, but we still have free speech, right? Well, not really. I mean, your son is wearing a, a shirt today. Uh, Israel, can you stand up for a second? Let me read your shirt. The front of it says, "This shirt is illegal in 53 countries." Restricted in Re- restricted 40 in nations 40 nations and, and hostile in 13 areas. Hostile in 13 areas. What does it say on the back? It's Romans. It, it's a quote from Romans, Romans 1 about I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Well, you know, apparently this you can add the United States to that list of countries where a shirt like that is illegal. There was a woman this week in Texas who went to a polling station doing early voting. And she was turned away from the polling station because she was wearing a shirt that had a religious theme. And it was de- it, they they determined at the polling station that 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 was too inflammatory, and that she could not wear that shirt while she was there in the polling station. And they would not allow her to go and vote. They turned her away. Isn't Texas ran by Republicans? I I thought Texas was supposed to be conservative. They are. They definitely are. Well, we've had people on hold for a long time. We, we were just laughing, though, at the end of the the break there, at the beginning of the break with the uh, commercial, the first thing we hear is, Mitt Romney! <laughs> Obama! <laughs> so Mitt Romney says, yeah, look at this guy. You know, he's out there trying to get the same things that he did that time. George Bush, better. So he's going to better. And he promised the same things that failed the first time. Huh? And they call that change. Hope. Huh? And then the other guy, and, and look at this guy, he's out there, and, and he's promising things that he didn't do. But, you know, that just goes to show you can say whatever you want, but you got to deliver, which was Jim's point, the first caller, about Romney, acting like he's all tough and going to go to nuclear war, basically, with Russia. Then he sends his son over there and says, nah, it's just politics, man, chill, we're good, we'll be, we'll be good. They're yeah. all blabbing. All four lines are on hold. Good morning, caller, who's this? This is Randy again. Um, or, uh, just a few minutes ago, or uh, ten minutes ago, uh, uh, Josh, you said I was searching for a grain of rice to justify supporting Mitt Romney. A grain of goodness, anything. Gra- okay, and I want to tell you that I found a whole hundred-pound bag of rice of why. And one reason, just as an example, is I could probably destroy every myth that you're going to tell me. Okay. So let's go. With- okay. Well, this is this is truth. Uh, Boeing Aircraft Company wanted to set up production of its Boeing 787 jetliner in South Carolina yep. and an appointment and an appointee by Obama to the National Labor Relations Board Leif Solomon tried to stop them from doing that. Oh yeah, I remember and I think that was absolutely wrong. But you're going to say Mitt Romney was supportive of it and would have allowed it in yada yada. Yeah. How do you know that? 
Well, he came right out and and strongly and said that and supported that along what with a, what about his record while he was governor of Massachusetts, which is really the only thing that we should be going by, not what he said and but which what no he's conservative done. wants to talk about. Because Romney just said at the half hour break, he goes, words don't mean anything. You got to prove yourself. You got to judge a guy by his actions. So let's judge him by his actions. He was not. Pro liberty, pro business, pro conservative. I mean, as a, in a libertarian sense, he's a fascist communist, but nothing compared. Randy, I guess what I'm saying is that's not a good reason. You you can't pull out little points of of change. Of, well, in this one instance, he would have allowed Boeing to do this or that, or those don't mean anything. Well, when you have freedom for for businesses to go where they want to go, that makes a better pro free enterprise business climate and increases production which will help the economy and then just as another example Romney did, does not did, believe did in Romney that. do that in Massachusetts with um, the health industry Romney does not believe in that uh, yeah well no I'm, I'm not for Romney care in, in Massachusetts but that's I agree with him when he says we shouldn't have it nationwide we should use states as laboratories let the states do what they want okay. but another example is the Employee Free Choice Act card check that's a horrible law Romney's against it Obama's for it He's, he, wait, he's against it because of his record in Massachusetts. Look at his record with labor in, in Massachusetts, Randy. What did he do in Massachusetts with labor? You don't know? No, I'm not familiar. Then how can you say that he is that he's against it? Well, I know that he supported Scott Walker, governor of Wisconsin, and what he was trying to do, whereas uh, Obama wanted to kick Scott Walker out of office. Yeah, he came out and did that because Obama was against Scott Walker. So, of course, Romney's going to say, uh, I'm for him, huh? Randy, that's what they do. It's just political speak, speak. It doesn't well, mean anything. Well, he's going to say opposite because that's what the people, the Republicans, want to hear. Just like he's going to say that he's pro-life, even though in practice, when he was governor, he was pro-choice. And now he's going to say what needs to be said to get elected. That's what we're trying to say. The person that promises the most to the most people that are going to go with what they want to hear... Whoever gets the most promises out and the most people to back them from their promises wins. Incidentally, but uh, their lies. While Mitt Romney was president or governor of Massachusetts, he ran on that platform of uh, job creation. And while he was governor, uh, Massachusetts fell to 47th out of 50 in job creation. So based on what he said and based on what he did. How is that possible? He's a great big businessman that's going to bring his business knowledge to the United States government. Right, exactly. And because he didn't have big enough government to get it done. You guys just don't understand the way things work. He's promising bigger government, Randy, right off the bat. Oh, also, on the pro-choice thing, personally, I imagine he's probably a pro-life guy, but I think what he said early in that campaign when he was running for governor is that he would not change any of Massachusetts' pro-choice laws because the people there just didn't want that, those changed, so he said he's not going to change it. He, he had to he bend. Said the he said he supported, supported a woman's right to choose, Randy. Yeah, he actually, well. Those words came out of his mouth. And you know what? You can imagine that he ha he's pro-life as much as you want to. I imagine that he's a unicorn dressed in a tutu. That doesn't make him one. Well, to be honest, that's not a big issue for me. To me, the bigger issue is economic freedom. And he consistently, at least rhetorically, which is something uh -huh. I can grab onto. I think uh, Steve Floyd just quoted actual statistics of um, economic Massachusetts record. Well, that Romney just said you got to look at a person's record, not what he says. Well, uh, uh, what, what I'm looking at, the, the important thing is the actual laws. That the rhetoric, you're right. Rhetoric, all the hot air in the world doesn't make a whole lot of difference. It's kind of an indicator where people. But you're go. saying that it does. Well, I'm saying that we know Barack Obama, for instance. Uh, supports the Employee Free Choice Act, supports the Fair Employment Act, supports more anti-discrimination laws, uh, was uh, appointed, it took action to appoint during a recess session this Leif Solomon of the National Labor Relations Board, who then went on to challenge Boeing's, a free company's right to set up a factory in South Carolina. We, those are actual things that have happened, facts, and then Romney, by rhetoric anyway, opposes those things, so what else do we have to go by? Romney, you know by rhetoric, also has opposed no. now, supposedly, the bailouts. But when they were happening, he absolutely was 100% for them. And then when it's turned to the conservatives were like, hey, these bailouts aren't so hot, and then he all of a sudden was Mr. Anti-Bailout. He was pro totally pro-bailout, and the reason he was, Randy, is because his company benefited from the government bailout money. The guy's a freaking crook. 
I mean, you can't go up. You cannot say anything around that. He benefited from the bailouts that he was for. He accepted that, and it was stolen money. We all know that. The bailouts were stolen from us. That money was stolen from us and given away for free to the cronies that the government's buddies, George Bush's buddies, Obama's buddies, and Mitt Romney's buddies, and he he benefited directly from them. So don't try to come up with some good reason why he's different because he's no different. We've proven it over and over. We're talking about facts and yeah, things that have actually happened. Yeah, but he says he's different, happened. Josh. You're missing the point. Things and, that have actually happened. He was for the bailouts. Randy, he benefited from the bailouts. You, he you, has gotten money from Goldman Sachs no different than Obama has. People say, yeah, Goldman Sachs owns Obama. He's gotten the same mm-hmm. amount of money. He was for the auto plant industry getting the bailout, I, even I, though later, I, oh, I was I don't think before. we're gonna I don't think we're gonna convince I was Randy with facts. I, was against it. I, I don't think oh. we're gonna convince Randy that Romney is the same as Obama. I don't think we're gonna convince Randy that voting for Romney is no different than voting for Obama and Ro- that we might even be worse off. That's Randy. Fine. Good luck. You can, Randy, you have the right and the freedom to do what you want, and we're all for that, too. We just don't want someone to call, we just don't want people to say that's actually going to make a difference. We're trying to point out reasonable facts of why it won't make a difference. We're trying to point out what's really going on and what you should do to prepare for what's really coming down the line and get your head out of the sand, pull it out of the snow right now. And see what see it for what it is. Yeah, hopefully on the other side it won't be us instituting more oppressive government on each other. That's the idea. Hopefully a year from now, when Randy calls in and if Mitt Romney wins, hopefully a year from now you can say, I hope Randy can call in and say, see, I was right and you guys yeah, were and you wrong. wrong. I really hope that too. I'm willing to bet a penny on it though. I'm not <laughs> going to bet five thousand dollars like Mitt, but I'm willing to bet a penny. All right, four five eight. Was it fifty thousand? Is the number we're going to move on to the next caller here? All right, we've managed to clear the lines. That I'm last not surprised we made him hang on for a long yeah. time. Well, it, it's one of those things, you know, you, you get going on a good um, rant, rant, and it's it's hard to to stop and say, okay, well, well, hang on a second. This, that was this. like a. See yeah, if anybody else. I hear they hit to come. The lines are coming back on. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Are you there? All right, speaker. We move on to the next one. Oh, good morning, caller. Who's this? This Winston. Winston, what's on your mind today? Hello, Winston. How you been? Ah, doing good. Doing good. Uh, uh, uh I hope I can get this concept across uh, uh, uh clearly. I, I don't know. Uh, there's no voting thing. Uh, uh, if 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 we had it set up so that uh, uh, 50 percent of the registered voters had to turn out for an election to be uh, uh, to, to to be validated, uh, if if 50 percent of the registered voters don't vote in an election, then the election is not important enough for uh, 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 for the people to be elected, um, hmm. uh, if 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 there's a hundred thousand people uh, 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 registered voters vote, uh, 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 out of three hundred million people that are registered to vote, and the one that gets the most votes claims he won. But if if you uh, if you had a, a limit on it that. Fifty percent of the registered voters had to turn out to vote, or the election would be null and void. Just uh, um, nobody's interested. Uh, y'all going about your business. So basically, you'd have to have a majority people to vote to have a majority of the vote to be legitimate. Amen. Hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> That's interesting. I'm willing to give that one a try. I would too. because I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, even then, I mean, what if we ended up with a, a, a no vote? Then, then we'd end up with the same people. Well, that's the and, part I'm going for yeah. because it would be yeah. null and void. I think it would be null and void, and I think that because if you already look right now at the low turnout, what do we have? Twenty three percent was the grand total from the last election after they totaled in all of the absentee ballots. The national election? No, no, here local. Oh yeah, was it twenty three? It, it was uh, on election night. It was nineteen. And he, I think it got up to, oh, it might have been 21, 21 to 23 percent, which means that uh, effectively nearly four out of five people stayed home and opted not to participate in the local election. And effectively, people were elected into office with basically 13 percent mm-hmm. of the vote. Mm-hmm. And I, I have a, a somebody. Sounds like a mandate. That is well, a mandate. Well, one of my regulars in the chat room at KFAR uh, has been saying to me over and over again that if you don't vote, you're just being lumped in with all of the lazy people. 
you're not really making an impact. And and I I just want to know is how do you know they're lazy? You've been told they're lazy. Uh-huh. You you've been you you are swallowing. You're drinking the Kool Aid that the people who are perpetuating the system are giving you because they're name calling. Because they can't go out there and cajole someone to come out and participate into the process, then they turn around and they say, oh, they're just lazy. Yeah, I had a guy write on a blog something that I had written to him, and he said, well, you know, it's you're just intellectually lazy if you don't vote, and you're just, you know, you don't want to take responsibility, yada, yada, yada. I think it's quite the opposite. You're much more intellectually lazy to just go march to the beat of the drum and go do what you're told. I mean, how intellectually superior is that? That's ridiculous. That's not. There's nothing intellectual about that at all. Go vote. Yes, master. Three more days. Three more days. Sieg Heil. Oh, oh my goodness! At, at a rally this week, uh, they actually started to chant. And Michelle Obama was up there of Hail Obama. You serious? I see. I kid you not. Nice. Oh, yeah. So it's coming, brother. Four five eight talk <laughs> is the number. Winston, appreciate you. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Yeah, I love Winston. Hello. Hey, hello. Who's this? Hey, this is Joanna. Hey, Joanna. How hey, are uh, you? I'm I'm doing okay, I guess. I just wanted to point out that Randy said that uh, it was not a big issue to him uh, that we murder ten thousand children a day, and I think that's probably true of most of the country, even the Republicans. Um, even the, the strongest pro-life advocates we have say it's still okay to murder your child for a few various reasons. And I think that's really sad. That's why we don't get any change, because it's not a big issue. I Nobody think, cares. I think I'd go, uh, and you'll probably agree, I'd go one step further with that. I think that the Republicans in particular that are pro-life, for the most part, like the status quo, because it's something they can run against. If you take away abortion, what are they going to run on? I mean, right now, it's a great platform for, for, for them to stand on and say, I'm pro-life, I'm pro-life, I'm against abortion, I'm against abortion. But they don't do anything about it, right. Because as long as it's there, as long as they have that enemy to fight, then they're the cavalry running in or the knight in shining armor that's going to do something about abortion. But look at what we had. We had George W. Bush, who was a supposedly a pro-life Christian <coughs> president, and you had... Uh, supposedly pro-life Senate and House, did they ever do anything to stop abortions? No, I heard the most he did was to say you couldn't take any more fetuses for your research, but right. they never right. ran out. Exactly. They're still doing the research all through his term. They never changed a dang thing, which proves, I think, that they have no intention of changing it. No because intention. it's a... It's a fa- it's a cannon fodder for them. It's something that they can run on and get people all worked up. At the very least, how, they can come all these different issues, and then they got to get that that little old grandma or someone that that uh, abortion is important to them. So they still have that one. I couldn't get her convinced to vote for me for any other reason but a- abortion. But she's got I've got them now because I'm pro life and well, it's a crock. Person, kind of sounds person, like Mitt Romney. He's mad. I was. Before before I was against it. <laughs> all right. My personal opinion is that they're all in it together, and they probably put on their black robes and go sacrifice those babies themselves when nobody's looking. It wouldn't right. surprise me. Wow. Thanks, John. I appreciate Thanks. your call. Four five eight talk is that a is number. That's such a good point. Yeah. I totally think that they they use that they use abortion. They have no intention of stopping it. Absolutely well, after eight none. solid years, you'd have to believe that unless you're a moron. Eight solid years of Republicanism, nothing. Republican control of the House, the Senate, and the presidency, and yep. they changed nothing. Good morning, caller. This is the hotline. Who's this? Did they even attempt to? This is Scott. How you doing? Scott. Hey, Scott. How's it going, man? Hey, appreciate you all. Hey, I'd give you another reason why the political process, why there's never going to be any change. I recently went to this UAF speech this UAF sponsored a Democrat and Republican to go to each national convention. And this political science major girl, pretty bright, she comes back and she gives her 30-minute spill on what happened there at the national convention. And she said, it was so awesome. No news came in or went out unless it was filtered. The whole thing was totally scripted. (laughs) It was awesome. So she didn't even hear what she said. Oh, she was serious. scripted. She was serious about it being optional. Yes, it's wow. scripted. The political process is scripted. 
Well, didn't we see that in both the uh, Democratic and Republican conventions, the national conventions? They were so scripted where you had uh, Boehner reading off the, uh, I think it was Boehner, one of those idiots, was reading off the teleprompter and, and it was telling him what to say while the vote was going on. It was The script was already there of how the vote was going to turn out. Yeah, but you don't understand, understand, Josh. I mean, this is this is America. It's okay if it's scripted, if the political process is scripted in America. It's just wrong if brown people do it. <laughs> you, know, you know, isn't that part of the reason why people are so upset about having the U.N. observers here to watch our election? Because they might actually find out that our elections are rigged. Or frauds. I, you know, I, I, you know, people are all, oh, we need to get the UN out of the United States. Well, you know what, I would say, I we would, have no problem with them being in everybody yeah, else's exactly. state. Yeah, exactly. I welcome it. Come on, let's let's take a look at this election. Well, if government's good, bigger is better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> government's good, the more the better. Scott, appreciate the call. Thanks, Scott. Four five eight dog is the number. Good morning. This is Patriots the Man, and we have out. cleared the lines. Either that or else we are on. Uh, in undergoing a Mitt Romney what, attack. No, I was going to say a, a denial of service attack, which that happens every now and then. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hello, it's Cecily. Hey, Cecily, what's on your mind? Um, I know that. Oh, oh I can't talk. At the same time. <laughs> um, all those uh, aborted children are in God's hands, and they didn't have to be here for all the lying, and the <coughs> and the thieving, and the raping, and the robbing, and and the way that all these people are towards each other and so anyway they're saved well i i, I wish okay. i could I, I wish i could accept that i mean that i i'm not sure i can believe that though i especially because what that does is that basically gives you an excuse to kill your baby what about because the right then to you life? know that, then you know that, that that your baby is just going off to be with god so hey it really doesn't matter well, the first thing so in other words, America is like the most Christian nation ever. Is we're saving babies, we're, we're by the wow. mil, by the truckload. We're evangelizing. Ten thousand, we save ten thousand people a day. All right. Good morning, caller. Who's this? I it's get Rocky. It. Hey, Rocky. What's on your mind? Hey, back to your uh, deal on the voting, uh, on the number of people in the borough voting. When I was, I had a swing at the borough assembly there and figured out right away. It came back. We had 75,000 on that list of registered voters in the borough. We got 98,000 people. And <laughs> if you look <laughs> right away, you're seeing a problem. Yeah. Uh, there's about 24,000 people here that are under 18. So you back it up, you got about, uh, no, it was 70,000 was the voting population they were using in the count. So we, if you want to argue that we have like 95% voter registration in this borough, I guess you can. So your idea of having a majority of voters to, to validate an election is kind of an interesting one, but you'd have to go back and try and straighten out the voting rolls. Yeah, which is never going to happen because, I mean, obviously, I don't know why, what benefit it is for them, but it's got to be something. There's got to be some monetary element behind that. Well, I think it's actually just kind of difficult to do that we really don't have a function to eliminate somebody from the voting rolls. Uh, and case in point, I have my oldest daughter is a resident of Montana now. She just got, before the election, she got her new voting card for here. Hmm. And so we carry a lot of people on these rolls that are no longer in the borough, but uh, the state, I guess, doesn't really have a function to keep the, the registration rolls cleaned up. Well, I guess does it really matter though? I I don't know if uh, I don't actually think it does, and I don't want them spending money trying to fix a worthless problem anyways. But if you look at it one way, your daughter could vote in Montana and she could vote here too. That's right. Vote early and vote often. That's, That's right. It. She could be like super American. <laughs> <laughs> well, but what it does say is we're maybe not so bad on being diligent to turn out to vote. If you no, nah, only like twelve thousand people showed up. Well, I understand that. Well, actually, what, it was a fourteen, fifteen thousand 15,000 in the mayor count? Was it? My race was just about the same. But if you take that... Still say, a 15, majority 000, of the people didn't show up. That's right. But it's maybe not 23%. It might be 35% or 38% that turned out. Hmm. Which is much, much better, Rocky. It's better. <laughs> I mean, it, may be, it may be more realistic. 
It might be more realistic. I would say better would be zero. Uh, and th- and that's the thing. Is it better? Legitimize them. Better is only if you believe that the voting process is is a legitimate way of trying to tell other people what to do. I mean, and, and if that is your philosophy, which I, I assume it must be, Rocky, because you you were on the borough assembly. No, he ran. I wasn't on it. No, I ran, and you I ran. was unsuccessful. Yep. Okay, but if you are running, Rocky's even if, a fantastic guy too. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I know an awful lot of people that that actually are fantastic people that believe that they ought to have the right to tell me what to do with my life. Um, be- beautiful. Kind of, don't you have it sort of backwards round? You're supposed to select somebody that's representing you. That that I have to, great, I have to select not, my master. It's not true, though. I mean, it sounds great, but it's just political speak. It's not true. It is at this point, and we have wandered a long been, ways away it's, from the beginning. It's been that way since about 1787. Okay, then you would have to offer up something that would be a little better. Wait. Oh, uh, we have for like yeah. a year and a half, and everyone just thinks that we're ridiculous. But I would say I'd go back to uh, the Declaration of Independence, and I'd stop right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, for seven if, years we were free, or nine. What was it? 11, the funny part is, is everybody that says we're ridiculous can't show, using the system that is, mm-hmm. use that to show why we're ridiculous. Well, and they also keep on putting the burden of proof back on you. Oh, oh, you think you think it's messed up? Well, why don't you do something different then? Instead of instead of instead of exactly, but instead of admitting even that there's anything wrong, uh, although some a lot of people will admit there's something wrong. They refuse to look at changing it. They they only continue to say, well, we have to stay inside the system. Oh, I, yeah, I'd agree with you guys on that. I mean, you go back to what was original there, and it actually, in my view, I thought the Confederation of States was a pretty good deal. Much better. Yep. Yeah. So was, anyway, but, just a thought, though, on the, uh, on the voter registration thing. Keep that in mind. It's, we're not as bad, maybe, as people think. Well, that maybe depends on your point of view. Because, perspective, uh, maybe I we're worse than we thought. Fourteen percent show <laughs> okay. up in thirty years. All right, <laughs> all right. Thanks, <laughs> fun, thanks Rocky. Appreciate thanks, it. Rocky. We got about a minute left. Do you want to take any more calls, or do you want to wrap things up, Josh? Well, we can hit the last one. All right. Good morning, caller. This is nice. All right, we managed to clear them. There we go. Great. Now uh, we have to hear Josh. Contact information. How do people get a hold of uh, the show or uh, the, you? PatriotsLament at gmail.com. The website is PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. And we're also, we're feeling pretty pretty cool because uh, we're on Lou Rockwell's yeah. podcast, which is sweet. We picked pretty up on the, on the show when he was on... Uh, when he was on two, three weeks, weeks ago. ago yeah. And then and we also have uh, our YouTube channels. Uh, Radio Free Fairbanks. Thank you. Uh, Richard Mayberry has agreed to come back on the show December 1st for the second hour. I'm really stoked about that. It's going to be interesting because we'll be right after the elections. And I've had a hard time getting a hold of him because he said that he's been more busy than ever because the, wor- the financial world is in such turmoil. So mm-hmm. I, we're all out here going, eee, he's actually in the... In the trenches, He's in the thick of it, and yep. it's not good. Well, and, and uh, you, bottom line action point for today: go out and buy an ounce of silver. Is that what you would say? Do or? anything else but go. I mean, f- I go vote if that is what you wish to do, but don't go shoot yourself in the head when you figure out that it didn't do any good, or uh, even worse that it did. Yeah, definitely uh-huh. don't think that it did do any good. <laughs> All right. Now go vote. I'm looking forward to uh, not voting myself and. Uh, should have a, non, a non-voting the party. change <laughs> next year. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week right here on Patriots Lament if we're still on the air.